What is going on guys? Wiser here and I'm coming to you live with our next uh, episode in our base building series. So I am here with Kadic from One Hive Invicta. How you doing buddy? I'm doing good man, thanks. Glad to have you here once again. Uh, seems like uh, the, our series is, is doing really well. A lot of people are appreciating what we're bringing here. So uh, we were uh, excited to jump on this uh, fourth episode for you guys because this is a big one, especially with uh, the current state of Clash of Clans, we'll say. Um, the update obviously hit us a couple days ago and uh, it, it really did not favor base builders, we'll just say. Um, it's uh it's a tough one so uh this episode we are going to be focusing on lalo defense uh kind of air defense placement uh, pathing uh, ideas we're going to talk about the new uh the sort of how the new update is affecting this and maybe a few things that uh, you as a base builder can do to at least help prevent it um <laughs> the this was not a favorable update for base builders uh to say the least no it wasn't like the extra spell the extra dark spell has made it so much harder to defend against uh, stuff i mean just imagine uh earthquaking something and still having three spells left to do something or zap quaking not only one but two air defenses yeah, that's just uh, just crazy. I mean, considering most kill squads can a lot of the time definitely at least get the Archer Queen and one air defense. And most of the time, yes. Without spells. And then you use your other spells to take out the other two air defense. Well, that's only one remaining. So I'm just going to flip over here. We'll check out the demo base that we've used a few times here now. And um, why don't you just kind of run us through this base, um, show us the good and bad examples of... of of Lalo defense and, and what you're talking about and and we'll just kind of go in here and uh, and see what see what we can come up with and maybe uh maybe thwart some of these these newer uh newer style attacks sure thing man um first of all what i said like the earthquake is the main thing you need to defend now like i'm always almost gonna say like screw the go wipers uh, make a weaker be a base against them because you know the earthquakes need to be defended like if you know what kind of war you're up against uh you can change your base uh, according to that i'd say um because leaving three whole spells after having used an earthquake is just so much so in my opinion focus on uh, defending against earthquakes um second of all something i just mentioned is uh the zap quake i, th I think i'm just going to mention it straight away because having an air defense next to your queen like for example right there you can just use four lightning spells uh right there and because uh, you can bring two poison spells even a maxed out dragon will just die so yeah. there's nothing to worry about like as long as you have a lure and uh, there's nothing to worry about so you can just waste so, so to say four spells on the queen and air defense uh use the other two on poison on the a drag loon combo for example and you're free to do whatever you want Mm -hmm. Like you can use uh, five live hounds uh, to tank for three air defenses. Like no one's gonna, no, what's gonna stop you? Yeah. So, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. I'm not so happy about this update. <laughs> Let's stick to that. And, um, but even though um, it's becoming a lot harder to defend stuff, uh, the same principles still count. Like, Absolutely. Uh, against hogs, for example, the same principles count. And the only thing you have to focus more on now is defending against the earthquakes. That's the main thing I've noticed. Yeah, I think, uh, real quick, one thing you just touched upon <clears throat> that we didn't even talk about was I think a huge piece is going to be uh, knowing what kind of war you're in, right? Because uh, I think changing up your base to try and tear up, at least trying to judge what your attackers are going to bring against your base is going to help you a little bit too. Like I, th I think changing up your base more often probably than you regularly do will help you as well. You yeah, in my opinion, that will help you defend so many more attacks. Yeah. I mean, you have to defend against Go Wipe with a lot of compartments and against Earthquakes with uh, fewer compartments. It's simple as that. Yeah. Um, so, about uh, Lalo defense. I mean, the, this base style is uh, quite common between uh, the scream Screaming for Airplay clans uh, with this uh, sort of square of air defenses. They can even be more like in a line or a T-shape. But th the thing is, the air defenses are the main restriction on your base. 
So, as I said in the introduction video, um, try to place them early so you can see what you're up against and see what you can still do with the base because they're, yeah, as I said, they're restricting you in building. Yep. Um, as I said, never ever anymore place uh, an air defense next to your queen. It's just not going to work. I mean, four lightnings and it's game over. Whatever CC content, but because the tanks that will live uh, the double poison, I mean, those are Lava Hound and the Golem, and they don't target air troops, so you're screwed, basically. Yep. Um, having that out of the way, uh, the most basic way to defend against it that most people know, I mean, uh, in Jake's earlier uh, base building video, it's been mentioned as well, is that your wizard towers are one of the main defenses uh, against a lunatic. So try to have them outside of uh, air defense ranges. Like the one in the center here, its its range is like right about here, barely touching any of the air defenses. That one will pretty much wreck any uh, loon coming towards the center. Um, with the new Zap Quake, yeah, I, I need to talk about it more because um, if you're eliminating two of these guys, uh, your Lava Hounds are not likely to path over the core. So one of the ideas I had to defend against this is to, to have good anti-balloon uh, defenses in the core. Um, yeah, I like do that. You know, do you know which other defenses really <coughs> against balloons? I suppose you do. <coughs> Tesla traps. Tesla traps, yes, right on the money. Because... They're not uh, Tesla farm is not only good against hawks; they're also good against uh, balloons. But imagine, for example, in this case, um, having a Tesla farm over here, like this, in three different compartments, making it hard. Um, every single one of those Teslas, and I've seen this often. I've made that mistake myself a lot of times. All of them will be targeting on the lava hound over the air defense, so basically making the Tesla farm useless. Because uh, what's going to target the loons? Yeah, nothing is. So if you build a Tesla farm, one of my general rules is place them like this. Place them away from uh, air defenses. It's kind of like you're killing, you know, two two birds with one stone kind of thing when you do that as well, because you're also creating your 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 like our last video. You're creating that extra kill zone, whether it be for hogs or loons. Right, you're you're adding that extra space, right, for for them to have to deal with it, and especially if you if you're an attacker and you're bringing a Lalo and you see a compartment, especially if it's a cleanup attack, and you know there's a, three Teslas and a Whiz Tower alone in a bottom compartment that aren't going to be tanked by Lava Hounds, you're going to have to come up with something to you know you're at least going to have to spend a rage for your balloons. At um, the very least, you need you need a good plan. Like either your kill squad needs to go there. Or, um, yeah, what you said, like bring a rage on a lot of loons and uh, a path a hound over it, for example. Like, Just it's to, quite hard to pull off. It You're is. You're gonna yeah. lose loons. So, as uh, like you can see, the same sort of principles apply. Like, with the idea of, of kill zones, it's kind of what I think about with balloons, too, right? You're creating kill zones outside of your air defense. You want your air defense, to, uh, air defense and mines to take care of the lava hounds but have yes. them out of range of specifically your wizard towers and teslas so that way you know as soon as they go out of that range they're going to turn on those balloons and, and start taking them down um yeah me. so yeah, we can split up actually uh, this subject into the lava hounds and the balloons like what we've been talking about up till now is mainly the balloon part um like an archer tower is okay against balloons but not the best uh, expos are actually quite good like you can place them in uh, tactical places if uh, a lava hound were to die, if, for example, and uh, the loons are closer than uh, the next uh, lava hound, it, it will probably tear up one or two of those loons. I've yep. seen it happen in uh, many raids. So expos are actually a really good uh, way to defend against balloons as well. Especially if your pathing's kind of good and it, you know, it takes them into the, it'll take the balloons into the air defense. But say your your expo is a little further back, it might not necessarily path from you know, air defense to expo and you're, it's just going to be locked onto your group of loons as it travels through the base. So, <clears throat> yep. And the next part of course is the sweepers. Um, 
there's a couple of ways uh, to go about with uh, sweepers. I mean, uh, a lot of people like pointing them inwards towards your base, like uh, this, for example, and making it really hard to path over the base, like in a, in an east-to-west fashion, for example. Um, and the other way is pointing like this, like I have right now. And that's mainly to uh, focus balloons coming in towards your base. Yep. So there's a couple of ways to defend it. Um, in this case, I, I've chosen for uh, this setup because um, it, co it first of all it covers so much. Like the most of the base is covered, and uh, for example, this area uh, is a, pretty much a loon trap, um, and it stalls the loons from coming there. Like if a lava is uh, sitting on top of this air defense coming from, um, say, the ten o'clock angle, uh, in this case the sweeper will blow. Uh, straight over the loon trap so that's another thing you can utilize uh, to your advantage yeah i actually really like the sweeper location in our demo base here because like you said it, you look and pretty much everything like look how much of that base right <laughs> it covers underneath that it's almost your entire base <laughs> but the disadvantage of course is uh, the top area because uh, it's more prone to being targeted by dragons yeah so I've seen I've seen a lot of people uh, placing a, a sweeper and uh, putting pointing it upwards in this case uh, to prevent dragons from uh, killing your archer queen. So if you're if you're feeling really confident in your base against a, a, a loon attack, then you can you can do that. Like uh, defend yeah, in a better way against dragons. Mm -hmm. um, the last thing about uh, balloons I wanted to mention are the traps. Um, I try to place them in awkward places for uh, lava hounds. I don't think this is the best example, um, but this one at the south uh, is a lot better, for example, because the range of this one is, well, I'm drawing it a bit off, but it, it, it's somewhere like this. And uh, say you're gonna place a lava hound straight down. Let me change colors for, for this one to make it clearer. Um, you're placing it way down at six o'clock. Do you know which one of the air defenses is going to? Is it this one or this one? I want to have security when I'm attacking. So at the very most, I would place it over, my lava hand over there, for example. You're going to favor it. over here. Yeah. You'll and, favor, favor one side slightly, right? Just to ensure it goes to the one you want it to go to. Yes, because if it goes to the wrong one, my whole plan is going, going to be messed up. And if you see the pathing from over there, it's going to move like this. Now, this trap's range is not in range of that uh, love hound pathing. Mm -hmm. So that pretty much ensures, unless you have really good attackers that manage to path a hound like this when the, the, uh, the first air defense uh, goes down, uh, they're not going to path over there. Or they have to have a lot of patience and wait till that first one goes down and place a second one uh, down at the south yep. and make it path over like this. So you can't always defend against it, but for a first attacker, um, I can almost guarantee you that that red bomb down here is going off against balloons and balloons only. Yep, I agree. And um, another thing about this Tesla uh, trap, um, I've placed it incorrectly um, on, a, on purpose because uh, these two Teslas, imagine coming from uh, this angle with uh, balloons and a haste or something, doesn't matter. Um, I, I'm pretty sure both of these Teslas uh, down here will go down with one one drop. balloon drop. Yeah, I, yeah, one definitely. balloon drop and a, a balloon drop itself. Like you don't even need two drops. Um, they will both die, which is pretty much a two for one trade. I'll I'll take that any day. So when placing a um, a Tesla trap, in this case it's okay because uh, loons will first travel to this one and then go in this angle and the other way around is the same story. Uh, but think about it. Think about it when you're placing your Teslas, a Tesla trap, will a balloon be able to get one drop off and get both uh, Teslas down? Now, will one space in between them um, kind of protect you against that splash damage? Yes, anytime. Okay. Um, unless they're standing like this, uh, on this edge of the Tesla, it might happen. But as you can see, they will target the other Tesla first. So mm -hmm. yes, it will prevent it. Um, yeah, lastly, the air skeletons. With uh, the new update, having two poisons, 
I'm not too sure how much effect the skeleton traps are going to have. Um, so putting them to air has suddenly become a lot more viable. Because a kill squad can be um, used for a ground attack and then use one poison for the CC. And then use the other C uh, poison for uh, skeleton traps. Yep. So right now you're forced to place them away from each other like we've done over here. Like we talked about in the last session as well. Um, so placing them together is is not going to help you. Um, but then again, it's not going to do too much. And I've seen a lot of uh, air raids with a uh, Laloon attack. Um, they're usually not bringing a poison specifically for the air part. So I'd say no, give, I give agree. it a shot. Give I think most shot. most people bringing a Laloon attack are going to opt for that extra haste versus a yep. poison. right? So if you can force that and have skeletons chase, just like we talked about in the hog video, if you can have skeletons chasing a group of balloons around for a huge duration of the raid if they're going to do some damage they're going to do a lot of damage yeah, yeah. especially unchecked if there are no lava pops around they're, they're going to take down quite a few balloons so it, it's a newer idea um test it out i haven't tested this myself uh, too much yet but it seems mm -hmm. viable now it seems more viable at least yeah, I guess we'll see, but I I do think that especially in in you know higher caliber of wars that we are really gonna see a lot of the zap quake uh, Lalo attacks because it's just just looking at it on paper it's just too easy you know yeah especially if you know where the the black bombs are like if you know the black bomb where the black bombs are I would just zap quake this one for example and come in with a, a heavy kill squad as we always talked about as this two o'clock position get the other uh, take two. out these other two uh jump towards the queen for example and he got three air defenses down and still two spells and the thing about this squad. um what i found I, i'm not a huge lalo guy i was always more of a hog and a valk guy coming up um but obviously i've i've expanded my uh, my attacking abilities so uh, my problem I run into with my Lalos though is you generally have to bring two golems and three lava hounds for the two remaining air defense right so that leaves you pretty short on balloons like most of the time if you want to have decent amount of funneling troops for your kill squad you only end up with about 14 balloons 14 right? yeah but now with the, you sacrifice those spells to zap quake the one air defense and all of a sudden you only need to bring two golems and two lava hounds to do the same thing and you get yeah, an extra you six, six extra balloons, balloons. Yeah. yeah you're gonna overwhelm most of the base <coughs> so right now with this new update it's all the more important uh, important to place your wizard towers and teslas correctly Absolutely. it's not enough anymore to only place wizard towers out of, outside of ad range yep that's basically the the name of the game and about the black mines, um, I'm not too sure about where to place them yet. I, the update is too new um, with the Zapquake uh, ideas. Um, but usually what used to work really well, and I think for at least defending against first attacks, this is still the general uh, rule, uh, pair them up. Uh, put both black bombs next to one AD and um, most favorably the one away from the queen. So. Uh, an idea kill squad is le uh, yeah well not likely to get uh, because two black mines at any level even level three lava hound they will almost pop it instantly yeah especially if it has to travel a while over the base and get some fire from f some teslas a couple of archer towers and an expo and even a couple of shots of uh, an air defense it's most likely to pop instantly yeah and that's the whole reason when uh, attacking a base in high level warplay you always see people dropping two lava hounds on the first air defense because they know they know the first hound is going to die immediately yep yeah so against inexperienced guys <laughs> this will uh, really help you defend um and basically take out a, whole, a full hp lava hound which is another important thing you don't want um, a 10 percent hp lava hound moving to the next air defense and soaking up uh, just one black mine it's probably wasted yeah yeah you definitely want those you want those mines popping on the fresh lava hound that's incoming to the to the air defense so you also want to kind of try and judge with your air defense well where is the first hound most likely to go in at right and you yes. want to make sure there's no red mines in that path 
and you want to make sure that he hits two black mines in that path. Preferably, yeah. Yeah. Um, another way to defend against the uh, Luna attacks, uh, you can see it over here. Uh, these air defenses are in range of each other. They overlap. So uh, the Lava Hounds, well here, like the Loons will always have uh, some travel time towards the air defenses. Um, they take double damage pretty much. Because all of the, the point defense that's hitting them is not too relevant. Like usually it's pretty much only the air defense that really touches them. So having them in range of each other, but away from uh, a single earthquake spell is the new name of the game right now. Because <laughs> the, I, I've done this myself in uh, recent wars. It's, it's hilarious to see. You earthquake two of those guys, uh, two zap spells, two zaps, and you still have a poison for the CC. Yeah. I mean, you so, need to prevent that. Yeah. So then on the other side, you go ahead and send your dandy little kill squad in, and you could probably net all air defense <laughs> and the queen <laughs> with, you know, yeah, you use all of your spell slots, but who cares? <laughs> if you are if you go in with a couple golems, six wizards, and your heroes, and the end result is no queen and no air defense, well... <laughs> Good job. You're one to right. <laughs> it's over, yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically. So obviously, so, I mean, base building took a hit, and and it keeps taking hits. I mean, as as every update comes out, it is making specifically Town Hall nine, but all the Town Hall levels slightly easier to three star bit by bit, and it's kind of getting to the point now where Town Hall nine is going to be very tricky to defend three stars. Yeah, against any attack, basically. Yeah, it's hard. It's tough, but you know. I still feel that if you build a correct base, like it follows all of the rules, um, it will always have a couple of weaknesses. Especially with this, these new spells, it's impossible to defend everything uh, properly. It just is. Um, mm -hmm. But my goal still is, uh, within base building, to take two or three hits and still have your base standing. Like, if you manage to defend two or three hits, uh, I'm happy. Yeah. So, that's my new goal. Like, I don't I don't imagine building a perfect base. It's not possible anymore. No, but I think uh, I think a huge po point is all these fundamentals we're talking about are so much more important now just because it, it is that slightly easier now. So if you have a glaring issue in your chamber sizes, compartment sizes, or uh, your pathing, you know, and or your air defense are exposed, you're going to make it r that much easier than it already is, right? So um, it's that much more important to, to make sure you're you're following the fundamental rules when you're when you're building your bases. Yep. And uh, one more really important thing about uh, the combination between lava hunts and uh, balloons: um, try to make the path towards the air defenses as long as possible. Like I've set this one up uh, specifically to show it. Uh, a lot of Tunnel Ten bases do this. Um, they try to funnel uh, balloons away from the air defenses. Like you, you've seen those uh, ring style bases. Yep. They they try to funnel the lava hounds and balloons away from the core because they have infernos, of course. Um, but at Town Hall 9, the same pr principle counts, but then for balloons and not the lava hounds. So what I've tried to do here, like for example, imagine coming in with uh, two balloons from this angle or maybe even straight up on it. I'm not too sure, but it's, it's a close call, this one is. Um, but this archer tower is set one space closer towards the, the mortar. Yeah, to purposely so, the anchor. Yeah. Yes, to anchor loons down there. And once they're here, Go on uh, the there's tower. only one space uh, between the wizard tower and the archer tower and two spaces between the archer tower and the, the air defense. So the balloons are most likely, as you said, to path down towards the uh, wizard tower down here and get fried by the Teslas. Yep. So... And up here, um, imagine these defenses not being there. Um, if you're coming in from this angle, your loons will first go to uh, the Archer Tower, go to this Tesla, and then split up probably towards the air defense and uh, the other Wizard Tower. So if you're planning on taking this, uh, like the, what is it, uh, 7, 8 o'clock air defense out, your loons are going towards another one. Uh, making it really hard to, to get to, to that air defense, which yeah. means that most likely the Lava Hound is dead and your loons are going to die. They're mm -hmm. all going to die. Yeah. 
So that's the main defense if everything else fails pretty much. Like if your uh, red bombs fail, um, if you manage to get the path incorrect, you can defend so many more attacks from uh, a Lava Loon attack. Yeah, you're either forcing them to simultaneously drop balloons on multiple defenses on the outside so they all die at the same time, forcing them to go to one spot, which is fairly tricky to do sometimes. <laughs> Okay, next shows uh, it's possible. It is possible. <laughs> Absolutely is possible. But you're forcing the guy to do that. He can't just drop, you know, he he can't just drop on this wizard tower and have them go to the air defense, right? Like, it's it's not just going to happen that way. So, uh, no, it's you, not. You need to make it tricky. Uh, one thing Iron Wolf 2 was talking to me about um, as kind of a last step to creating your base that helps defend against not only Lalo, but... Um, really all sorts of de uh, defenses. Make sure your buildings are pushed out as far as possible. Um, obviously within reason. You don't want just a lone building sitting out in the middle of nowhere. But if if you can force... A, a, one thing specifically with balloons that fails raids. And again, another thing we didn't even mention is the extra 30 seconds that everyone gets now. Uh, which is absolutely absurd and ridiculous. Let me just say that. But it is what it is and we have to deal with it. So now, the more time that you force the balloons to take to get to the defenses and get through the base, um, the, the better it is for you as a defender, right? So if all of your buildings, if they have to, if they have to deploy all their balloons from the outside, you're, you're basically adding a whole section that they're going to have to fly over before they start doing any damage, right? Yeah, especially now with uh, the two extra spaces on each side. Like, that does make a big difference. Yep. The disadvantage of that is, uh, like, as always, it's a trade-off. If there's a lava on it in CC, which is likely right now, um, you're going to have an easy archer healer trick, like, for e example. Easy anchors. Here. Yeah, it's hard It's, it's hard anchors. to do that and keep all of, the, all of your buildings still protected. You'll at least, if you push everything right out, you'll probably end up with at least one or two spots where they're just not defended. You just drop an archer and a healer. See you later. Um, but just something to think about because on as well as Lalo, think about think about dropping a wall breaker from this open spot or having to drop a wall breaker from back here. Well, <laughs> it's a lot easier to judge where the wall breaker is going to go, right? When it's right beside the wall versus having to drop it, you know, six or eight spaces away from the wall, right? I, I, we've all had wall breaker fails. Just everything in general, you, you, it's a lot harder to judge. The pathing at when when your buildings are at least spread out and, and, that, and that's why i said within reason you don't just want to have stuff out in the middle of nowhere and have an easy lure because that's a huge detriment to your base but um, something to think about when you're uh, finalizing your base yep so <clears throat> the basic rules still apply uh keep in mind that earthquakes are the name of the game right now probably and um yeah keep your queen safe and your air defense is safe and uh, like keep them away from each other like the old school cold blooded lava loon will still work like uh, on this base is a perfect example uh, you can jump over here drop a golem drop your kill squad make a nice and wide funnel as always and you can get the, uh, this air defense the cc a sweeper and the queen and it's game over yep so mm -hmm. Defending against Lava Loon is really hard right now, and especially now with um, the dead zones that are really popular. A cold-blooded Lava Loon is often detrimental for those bases because most of the time the middle compartment is empty, uh, and that, that's just yes, leaving an air defense really close to the queen. It almost always is. In every case, yeah. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Like uh, cold-blooded Lava Loon is uh, making a bit of a comeback with. Uh, all of the dead zones so it's fun to see yeah yeah absolutely so don't get frustrated guys i mean this is not easy by any means it's getting more difficult as time goes on but just continue to follow the fundamentals and and, and see how this new update plays out uh everyone's going to be in different caliber of wars and that's why i'll go back to one of the first things i said here was that you really need to judge your opponent and think about what kind of attacks is he going to bring. Is he going to is he going to know enough to bring a double zap quake, um, or do you, are you expecting go wipes? Right, because you're you're going to want to tier the base that you're using depending on what kind of attacks you might see. Right, because uh, not everyone is at the same level. Right, uh, you face clans that bring 
attacks that are one way and you face clans that bring attacks are another way and you got to try and judge that as a defender and start to tier your bases towards specific clans that you're facing not just build one base and keep it up not that you ever should have done that but it's that much more important now so um do you have anything else to add at this point i think uh, we covered uh, pretty much everything like, i think so uh, there's too. a couple of small details uh, but we'll cover that later because they're uh, newer concepts like the dead zones i just mentioned uh, I think we'll cover them, but uh, it'll be in an, another episode. Yeah, and I think I think too we will probably take you know a week or two to see how this update has really really impacted base building, um, and then make uh, make another video, kind of just summing up what the update, how the update has affected base building, and and we'll have a much better idea of. <laughs> of how of how things have changed right i mean it's only been a few days we haven't even i think we've each clan has had one war um since the update um so we both uh know um we got a, a matchup versus north remembers this weekend so that's going to tell us a lot about the types of attacks we're going to be seeing here so we'll have a lot more information in the next video concerning specifically the changes that the update has made to base building um yeah, so if we got nothing else to add, maybe we can just call it here? I think so, yes. I'm excited right. to see the scrimmage, actually. There's going to be a lot of coverage, and mm. uh, yeah, I'm going to learn a lot as a base builder, at least. Absolutely, right? And and uh, the, this next week to two weeks is really, I think, going to going to tell the tale for the future of Clash with the Clash Class War community because I know a lot of people were upset and I, I don't want to touch on it too much but um, I, all we can do at this point is just embrace it and move on um, so that's what we're going to do and uh, and hopefully have some good content coming uh, coming up for you guys because uh, I know you're going to be very diligent CAD in, uh, in making sure that uh, all of the clan and all of the guys watching these videos um, have at least the best tips and tricks to, to make your base, you know, hopefully have your base hold at least, like you said, two or three times. If you get two defenses, guys, three defenses on your base before it gets three-starred, you won, okay? So <laughs> keep that in mind. You're not going to build a base that never gets three-starred. That is impossible now. So, um, but with that being said, uh, I think we'll we'll call it here. Uh, that does it for your wisdom from Wiser. Just trying to help you guys beg that next three star. And until then, I'm out.